So welcome back to the channel. If you're new, you'll have seen we're building a 4x4 overland camper van out of an old work van. So, what have we done recently? So the thing that's been holding this build up more than anything else is waiting on the large chunks of the vehicle to be cut away and new panels to be fitted. So, what we've done is we've had... So we've had some windows fitted. So the reason I wanted these, and there's multiple options, you can have the more camper van style ones where they open up, they come with the blinds, they've got a better thermal value. I'm fully aware of all these things. However, these look the absolute nuts. The look factory, the tinted, they've got the openers. You can have them open while you're driving. It works for me. The other thing is with having the second row of seats being put in here, um, I also want to give it that car feel so whoever's traveling in the back doesn't feel car sick and they're able to open the window get some fresh air and they don't have to worry about some camper van window being ripped off in the wind so the next really obvious thing that you can see we've had fitted is the flares that i got from your vans these aren't the widest ones that you can get you can get far wider most people tend to get quite a narrow one on the opening door side and quite a wide one on the uh, the opposite side Personally, I went for the uh, the narrow ones on both sides just purely because it gives you six foot four internal width. I'm six three, it's enough. A bit more would have been nice, however, it's enough. And I know I'm not going to catch it on trees. I'm keeping the van as narrow as possible. Uh, and for what I do with the off roading and whatnot, it is, I think, best for me. So, the main issue that I've got at the minute is when I open this slide door, it's going to foul when it gets halfway back on these flares. Lucky enough, it's an easy fix. Mercedes do a different hinge system for the twin rear wheel vans. So I've ordered that, it's on its way. So for now, I can only open the door halfway. So the roof, we bought local, we went to Danum Custom Campers and he fitted me a VW T6 pop top. It's the long wheelbase, I uh, paid a little bit extra to make sure I got the windows in it and I got the full zip so I can pull the whole thing. Uh, all the material back in summer can have the roof up so it's like one giant sunroof letting that air circulate through. So. With you not having many options for buying the pop-top roofs for the Sprinter, uh, it means that there is some adaptation. This can be a negative for some people because it means there's a lot more trim and fabrication that you've got to do to the inside. It also gives you some advantages that on the actual roof itself, I've still got the roof rails on show, so I can still have a roof rack of sorts. So as you can see, down either side, there's quite a bit of room left over that I can still fit a roof rack down here, put the awning on, put whatever I need down the side of it, Bit of protection for this fiberglass roof bags of room for solar on top so we dropped on as well because i've managed to mount it far enough forward that we've actually got quite a bit of space here to have a bit of a roof basket to put things like leveling blocks firewood anything that's mucky that you don't want in the vehicle so as i've said previously there's a bit of trim work to do in here um it is what it is you can't fit something for a different vehicle and expect it just to fit it looks shocking now however Anyone that's done these kind of projects knows that with a bit of trim work, it's soon, soon hidden and made good. So we go right into the cab area here. This is where the bed's gonna sit on. This will all be trimmed up in uh, the carpets. This will all be nice and warm. Bed's gonna come down. Even with the bed in the up position, there's still all this headroom. I mean, I can go all the way back to the bed and still stand up, which this is where the shower's gonna be. So as you can see, I've got room still. From the other end, you can just see how much space this adds. I can't even reach the roof. All these panels unzip, we've got windows, we've got another big window here, another window on the other side, and as said before, this entire front section all unzips and rolls up to make a giant sunroof. So now that those bits are done, I can now finish off the insulation, finish the soundproofing, run the cables and start to make the thing look nice. I've got the rubber floor in now, a uh, bit of a faff to do, and it's not everybody's cup of tea, and it's minging today. However, this worked so well for the Land Rover, I've put it in this one as well. The only thing left to do now is just glue it down um, and just sort out the tie-down eyelets, and as well as that, getting the trim on all these sections. And that's another job out of the way. The next job we've tackled is a diesel heater. 
a little bit unconventional by putting the fuel tank here. Um, the reason I'm doing this is purely because I'm going to put some cupboards in the garage area. I don't know where the shelves are going to sit or anything like that, so I'm not going to put something where I then can't fill it up at a petrol station or from a jerry can or something like that. So at the minute, you open the door, easy access, um, and you can fill up that way. Uh, I will be putting a better fuel line in and also just making it a little bit better in store, but I've got to see how the build goes and adjust to suit, if that makes sense. Eventually, what I probably will do is have uh, something like an aluminium uh, tank or something similar made that sits right in the back door where the fillers on display where I can see what the level is and how it's going um, but that is way 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 down the line that's going to be when I get the water tanking kind of thing as I've said on many of my videos the supply fuel line is absolute garbage um, this will be getting upgraded to proper fuel line with a proper copex kind of pr plastic surround to protect it round it so on these dead dead simple you basically you've got your cold air in your hot air you're a hot exhaust out and your fuel line in attach these on it's just the jubilee clips you put the four bolts in drop all this through the floor this turret didn't come with the kit but i highly recommend if you're using it in a in a van with insulated floor and stuff use a turret it keeps this mega hot exhaust away from your insulation your wood things like that because the last thing you want is your floor setting on fire basically so we're going to nip this up drop this down onto the plate bolt it up from underneath put the fuel line on and that's the underside done So when it comes to wiring these things, you really can't go wrong. You've got one massive, marusive plug at this bit. This goes on to the heater itself. You've got a trailing lead with a, it's similar to a waterproof plug. I wouldn't say it was waterproof. This goes to your controller, just plugs in. From here, the little loom, you follow it down. You've got this end, which is fused and then you've got your connections that go on to your power source and then finally you have one more plug and that just goes straight onto your um, fuel pump you can't mess these up all the plugs are different they only go on one way so really really straightforward um, some of them are a bit long the cables but then again you'd be upset if it was too short wouldn't you so just make a tidy, tidy job as you can out of it and then uh, see so how you go let's get all this plugged in So that nice positive connection there there's no way that's getting unplugged and again this is temporary till the boarding's gone and we have proper fuel line and everything oh i can now put the diesel heater on off the power bank jump on the mattress and at least stop the night and go out and film some videos so as you're going to notice this isn't going to be the only video this week what i'm going to try and do is split them down to maybe if i can get the extra videos in with like products and things do two videos a week so you get a bonus one so we've got the diesel heater in now i haven't powered this up and checked it yet but this is the new bluetooth one from max speeding rods i don't know how it's going to be um obviously these are not the quality of the herbis bashers and wabastos however they are one seventh of the price so it's a trade-off these ones, uh, I think these are around the £200 mark, so these are like a third of the price. However, the housings are a lot thicker, they seem a lot more sturdy, and there's a lot more tech that goes into it. So, when I power it up, we'll see if it's actually worth it. And please, 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 before you start frantically commenting, I am not leaving the diesel pipe like that. I know it's gash. What I'm going to do is basically, in this corner, we're going to have a load of cupboards. I'm going to get a diesel tank made that's going to sit in them cupboards and we're going to have all proper braided fuel hose, everything like that. But for now, while I'm working on the vehicle, I just need it to work. So this will do me. So that is in now. So on the way home, we're going to get some diesel for this. We're going to get it attached to the uh, power bank and we're going to get it fired up and that's going to be toasty warm. And for the mornings that I go to work or something like that where it's freezing, I can get on the app, I can turn the thing on half an hour, an hour before I want to set off and the van's already going to be warm. 
So while we're messing about doing all this, I just want to say a big thank you for uh, the people that have made the effort to comment a little bit more, give a few more thumbs up, and to actually watch through the videos without skipping as much. It makes a massive difference as a creator for people to it, the, the, the judge you on the watch time, basically. So if you're skipping through and missing half the video on a 10 minute video, if you only watch half of it, they don't promote it. So thank you to the people that have made the effort to make the analytics a little bit better. On the videos that I've asked for it to be done and people have done it, it is noticeable. So it is much appreciated because you use make this platform what it is. I just put the stuff out there. So on the front of the vehicle, you'll notice that I fitted some uh, brackets and tabs. We're going to be fitting some new spotlights and a switch panel in the front of this. So that's going to be in, I think, next Saturday's video, if all goes to plan. We'll get them spotlights fitted. Um, we'll show you how it's all wired. We'll, we'll show you what they do. I'm going to get the drone up at night and show you the spread and things, because at least you can see with your own eyes what they actually do. So I hope this little update was of interest to you and you can actually see where things are progressing. We'll get more in-depth videos and fitting coming soon um, but basically this is where I'm at it's all going to start now that all the big sections are cut out so stand by for the build and I hope this is of use to people that are wanting to tackle this themselves thanks for watching and make sure you subscribe